He writes, the round is designed to kill, not wound. I'm going to stop right there because every bullet fired into a human being is inflicting deadly force on that human being. Everyone. Yeah. And virtually every bullet was designed with the capacity to kill. I mean, something like even 22 long rifle is it's not designed for people or deer, but certainly designed to be effective on, you know, small game. Uh, Lots of rabbits and squirrels have been taken with 22 rifles. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, this notion that there should be like some sort of non-lethal, like, what are they? This seems to fall into the same category as people who are like, why didn't you just shoot him in the leg? Right. It's like, well, um, that's not what you do in a self-defense situation. I mean, is nine millimeter, which is the pistol caliber carried by the U.S. military, is nine millimeter not designed to kill or wound because it's the most common civilian self-defense caliber too? And lots of lots of people have been killed with a nine mil. Um, and again, you killing is not inherently unlawful or immoral. It depends on who's doing the dying. Yep. Um. Oh, this is another rich one that blew my mind. And he continues writing, both the AR-15 and the M4 contain barrel rifling to make the round tumble upon impact and cause more severe injury. The truth is the opposite, folks. The barrel rifling stabilizes the round. That's what happened in Mogadishu. The rounds were too stabilized. You actually have to design the bullet in a particular way so that it imbalances and tumbles on impact, that it can overcome the stability of the barrel rifle. Yeah, he gets like the purpose of rifling dead wrong. And this is just like a basic failure. This is this is the equivalent of somebody saying, oh yeah, a bicycle has three wheels. And it's like, well, no, that's not by definition. Bicycle, two wheels. Right, bicycle uh, has skids. <laughs> yeah, it's like... He fails to identify the function of a very basic part. And like, this is the problem with use versus study. And use is great. Um, but a lot of the times what you're looking for in an expert is study. And so somebody who's studied the issue. Um, I have eaten beef for my entire life. I would not say I'm an expert with respect to cows. Either they're veterinary, like how to treat cow illnesses, how to take care of a cow, any of that stuff. And it doesn't matter how much beef I eat. I will never become an expert in, you know, cow physiology, cow behavior, any of this stuff. And this is his entire argument is I've eaten a lot of beef. So um, congratulations, sir. But this you are not an expert and you're in fact... Um, I know children at the range with better knowledge than this guy has. Then he just makes it an idiotic logical fallacy. He writes the combination of automatic fire and two, two, three round is a very efficient killing system. The same can be said of the AR 15, except it can't be said of the AR 15 because the AR 15 is missing. One of the two components you just, listed as requirements for an efficient killing system. It's not an automatic rifle. And the problem that he runs into that he's not like that he's where he's hiding the ball is that anything he says, like if you accept his notions about the, uh, the AR 15, you also would have to accept his notions about every other semi-automatic, like this would apply to every other semi-automatic hunting rifle or whatever else on the market, because Certainly somebody's semi-auto 270 must be more lethal than there's, you know. So um, this guy is basically saying every civilian firearm is in some capacity an assault weapon and. Mm. it or, or must be distinguishable from this in a meaningful way, which of course they're not. Yeah. All right. He continues, automatic rifles like the M16 and its more modern carbine variant M4 are functionally similar to semi-automatic rifles regulated under California's assault weapons ban and are off and often are equipped with the same features like pistol grips and adjustable stocks. It is my opinion, based on my military service, that these features individually and in combination make semi-automatic rifles more lethal and more useful in combat settings as described in more detail below. 
But lethality is fine for self-defense. We're allowed to use deadly force in self-defense under appropriate circumstances. And just because something is useful in a combat setting doesn't make it not useful in a civilian setting. 